Somebody has leaked to the Wall Street Journal that Nelson Peltz is currently ahead in the vote count for the Walt Disney Company Board of Directors. Repeat, Nelson Peltz is actually winning. Well, folks, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment and turn that little red subscribe button to gray. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. Make sure to join us every Sunday afternoon at 6 p.m. Eastern right here for the live show. Less than 24 hours ago, the Wall Street Journal released Disney try and blitz shareholders for votes in the last stretch of the proxy fight. And this came right after additional support from Nelson Peltz began flooding in from places like Newberger Berman, another mutual fund company. Disney has won support from several big name shareholders, including Star Wars creator George Lucas. We talked about that last week, and yes, I still have a bit of suspicion as to how that came about. And Laureen Powell Jobs, the widow of Apple co-founder Steve Jobs. Former Disney CEO Michael Eisner, who stepped down as chairman and lost, frankly, to Bob Iger back in 2005 after a shareholder revolt, as well as J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon and the descendants of Walt and his brother Roy have also publicly supported Disney. The fight is far from over. It can result in a variety of outcomes. It's always possible the two sides could reach a last-minute settlement ahead of the annual shareholder meeting on Wednesday, April 3rd. Again, we'll be covering that live right here on Valiant Renegade. But here's the kicker. Somebody leaked early to the Wall Street Journal of just where the vote tally currently stands. And with roughly 22% of votes having been cast so far, Peltz, Nelson Peltz, leads Walt Disney Company director Maria Elena Lagomasino, while Jay Rasulo, the other name on the try and slate, has so far failed to gain much of attraction or foothold with shareholders, these folks say. So Nelson Peltz is currently in the lead. And yes, this is highly unusual for information like this to come out. And of course, the response from Disney was exactly what you would expect. A spokesman for Disney said that leaking this early vote count was, quote, a highly inappropriate attempt to sway votes. And yes, I'm going to agree with the folks from Disney on this one. Leaking this kind of information early is highly inappropriate and something that shouldn't be taken lightly. But that being said, the second part of his statement is also a bit ambiguous. Who could this potentially really sway votes for? Arguments could be made in either direction. Certainly some could say, well, this will only help push Peltz further into the fray with people coming to his support now that they think he has a real chance of winning. It could also bolster the Disney fanatics out there who think that, well, Peltz has no chance. I don't need to turn a ballot in. But now they do. The key part, however, is here. And I want folks out there to let me explain this before they hit the panic button. Many of the company's largest institutional shareholders, such as BlackRock and Vanguard, have yet to cast their votes for the Disney board. And they often wait until closer to the deadline. And that is true. Most of those mutual fund companies will probably wait until Monday or Tuesday of next week, or perhaps even Wednesday morning when the votes close before the annual shareholder meeting to cast their ballots. Most of them, if not all of them, are going to do this, of course, digitally. So far, a minority of shareholders have voted. As of Tuesday, just over 22% of shares had been cast, according to people familiar with the matter. The bulk of them held by individual and other smaller investors. That means that with Nelson Peltz in the lead, those smaller investors and those smaller institutions, the individuals out there that have cast their ballots as part of that 22%, seem to have been thus far unswayed by their support for Peltz, even in the face of all of these high-profile endorsements that Bob Iger has been desperately running around trying to rack up. But with BlackRock and Vanguard combined, that's roughly 15%, 13% or so, depending on exactly where they are right now, of the total outstanding 
Disney shares of stock. But this is why we discussed last week the critical importance of these big proxy advisory firms. The people like Glass Lewis, who supported the Bob Iger slate as is, and their bigger counterparts, ISS or Institutional Shareholder Services, that recommended that the mutual fund companies that they advise vote for Nelson Peltz in lieu of Mary Lagomasino. They didn't give a guidance on voting for Jay Rusulo in the affirmative, so Peltz is looking like he could actually win this thing just without his right-hand man. Now, before people out there knee-jerk reaction and assume that the big guys like Vanguard and BlackRock are going to automatically vote for the Bob Iger board, I want to caution you on that because the potency of these advisory firms is very strong, ISS especially. And I think a lot of them are going to be looking at this in the sense of it's just one board seat and there's a lot of folks out there that think that Peltz himself can do some good. It doesn't disrupt Bob Iger's CEO position. It doesn't disrupt Bob Iger being on the Disney board of directors. Although, of course, we learned a few days ago that Tryon withheld all of their votes for Bob Iger's board seat, which, quite frankly, is not the worst idea in the world, considering that Bob Iger doesn't need to be on the board of directors to continue running the ship as CEO. In fact, that's part of the very problem that Nelson Peltz has brought up on a multitude of occasions, even though he's not the chairman of the board anymore. Mark Parker is. But even though Bob Iger is not the chairman of the Disney board, he still has a great deal of influence on it. And one could argue very easily that not having Bob on the board at all during a period when they're supposed to be finding a proper successor, well, it probably wouldn't be the worst idea. Now, folks, this doesn't mean that Nelson Peltz is definitively going to win on Wednesday at the annual shareholder meeting. Again, we'll be covering that live right here on Valiant Renegade. Make sure you're tuned in. But it does put him in the lead position right now and does tremendously increase his chances of crossing the finish line. There are more and more folks getting behind him, although they're not the biggest kids on the block, at least publicly. And I'm not so sure that we would ever publicly see places like Vanguard and BlackRock take a public position, at least not up until after they've cast their votes. We'll see what happens, but if they do those at the last minute, the impact they're going to have on the rest of the guys out there might be minimal. Finally, if you're wondering how Bob Iger was feeling about this whole process, perhaps right up until yesterday, well, the Wall Street Journal article gives us some insight there as well. Bob Iger told colleagues before the earnings announcement, that would be the one that we had just back in February, that he expected the positive announcements from Disney to serve as a kind of knockout punch to Tryon's proxy campaign. People who have spoken to Iger in recent weeks have described him as confident and happy with the direction of the company. He told one associate that he is confident Disney will prevail. One has to wonder if Bob Iger today is still as confident as he was in this proxy fight a couple of weeks ago. Survey says probably not. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.